and welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that exposes Pakistan's role and nexus in promoting global terrorism and its funding. Here are the headlines. Fresh encounter in the Kashmir Valley. One soldier martyred. NIA puts Pakistan diplomat in wanted list. The Kashmir Valley saw encounters being carried out in the Kulgam district on the wee hours of Wednesday following the information about the presence of militants in the area. Newsweek South Asia takes a look. An army chawan lost his life in a 12-hour encounter in the South Kashmir's Kulgam district. The slain soldier was identified as Sipoy as Kunaga Roy. He succumbed to his injuries at the army hospital. Security forces launched an operation on Tuesday night following a tip off about the presence of three Lashkar e Toiba militants, Muhammad Azad Bala, Bilal Ahmad, and Suhail Ahmad Dar in Gudwani area. Reportedly, hours after the encounter began, a mob gathered at a site and started building stones at the security forces to help the militants. After giving several warnings and firing their gas shells, the forces opened fire to control the mob, killing at least four and injuring 40 others. Blaming the civilians for casualties, Director General of Chomu and Kashmir Police, SP Vait, said the civilians had no business to be at the encounter site. As earlier also we have appealed that people, particularly youth, should not come near the encounter sites. When bullets are flying between, when terrorists fire, they fire indiscriminately. When forces retaliate, they also fire. So the trajectory of the fire is quite, uh, it carries up to a long distance. Many of the young boys think they, they are at a safe distance, which is not true. So these bullets can hit anybody. And it's very unfortunate that youth, no police would like, or army or CRP would like even one civilian getting hurt. Let me tell you, let me make it very, very clear. I can speak on behalf of most of them. No one likes even one injury to a civilian. But then these foolhardy youth, they come very near to the encounter site. It's not, some marriage is not going on there. They have no business to be there. And if they come and throw stones and come near the site, this is what will happen. No, what? Uh, I, I don't think much police and CRP and army, we try to keep them away. They have no business to be. My appeal to them is they should not come near the encounter sites. We are being forced to take up the gun because the adversary does not understand the language of humanity. He does not understand the language of decency. He continues to use terrorists as extension of the state policy. He continues to use terrorism, ceasefire violations to cause chaos and mayhem in the very. India knows that it is absolutely essential to talk, but our dilemma is whom do we talk to? Pakistan and ISI-funded separatist party, Chemu and Kashmir Liberation Front, CKLF, call for a shutdown in the valley against the killings and led protests. Buryat leader Mirwayas Umar Farooq blamed the Indian government for systematic murder of Kashmiris and threatened if this did not stop the consequences will squarely be on Indian state. Meanwhile, Bullis detained JKLF chief Mohammad Yershin Malik as he tried leading a protest march against the civilian killings in Kulgam. As the news of Malik's arrest spread, hordes of angry youths took to the streets and belted stones at the security forces. The encounter in Kulkan comes amid a series of counter-insurgency operations by the local police and security forces over the past few weeks which have resulted in the killings of militants and civilians in subsequent clashes. Wednesday also saw Pakistan rangers violating the ceasefire at the line of control, a de facto border dividing the disputed region of Kashmir in Bunch district of Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan rangers fired mortar shells, automatic weapons and small arms and the Indian troops retaliated. Banik's Trigon residents were forced to stay indoors amid the firing. 
तकरीबन आज साढ़े पाँच बजे पाकिस्तान ने फायरिंग शुरू कर दी और इसका करारा जवाब हमारी फ़ौज भी दे रही है लोग बहुत ज़्यादा डरा हुआ माहौल बहुत ख़राब है हम कुछ घरों के अंदर हैं बहुत ज़्यादा माहौल ख़राब हुआ है Two cops were injured in southern part of Kashmir as militants threw a grenade at a police station on Thursday, media reports said. The police station in Bulwama district was reportedly attacked at around 10:40 a.m. Two policemen sustained splinter injuries and were rushed to a hospital for treatment. The area was cordoned off soon after and a search operation is underway to nab the militants. No militant outfit has claimed responsibility of the attack so far. An armed insurgency exploded in Kashmir in 1989 with thousands dying in the worst years. New Delhi accuses Islamabad of training and arming militants and helping them infiltrate across the LOC as a proxy to mount attacks on Indian soil. The nuclear-armed Naples have fought two of their three wars since independence in 1947 over Muslim-majority Kashmir, which they both claim in full but rule in part. The National Investigation Agency in India has put Pakistan diplomat Amir Zubair Siddiqui on its most wanted list for planning a series of attacks in Bengaluru and his alleged involvement in a plan to launch a 2611 style terror attack. We have a report. The National Investigation Agency has released two photos and is seeking information about Siddiqui, who is also held responsible for spying and also for conspiring to attack the U.S. consulate in Chennai, the Israeli consulate in Bengaluru, and the Eastern Naval Command headquarters in Vishakhapatnam. The U.S. shared key information with the Indian agencies in the case, such as code names used, wedding wall for U.S. consulate, spice for bombs, and cooks for terrorists. This is the first time that the NIA has included a Pakistan diplomat in the wanted list. The manner in which Pakistan is the epicenter of international terror, uh, NIA must definitely have some evidence about this gentleman's involvement in terror activities. That's why they made it public and they've done it rightly because I think the world needs to be warned about how Pakistani state is promoting terrorism and elements within Pakistani state, how they are connected in, uh, in, in protecting and promotion of terror worldwide. So I think this is very important and NI has done the right thing. Siddiqui, also known as Boss, worked as a visa consular at the High Commission of Pakistan in Colombo, Sri Lanka. The NIA has evidence against Siddiqui and two other Pakistani officers for waging war against India. A fourth officer is also being investigated by the NIA. Earlier, a charge sheet was filed by the NIA in February this year under sections of the Unlawful Activity Act 1967. But Siddiqui's name popped up when Mohammad Zakir Hussain, a spy working for the ISI, was nabbed in 2013 by the Tamil Nadu police. Hussain confessed that it was Amir Zubair Siddiqui who had sent him to India to spy and plan attacks against India. Every diplomat, whether in the neighboring countries, they be Nepal or they be Bangladesh or they be Myanmar or they be Sri Lanka, are indulging in high level of activities inimical to Indian interest. In Delhi, we have told loud, loud and clear to Pakistan that the High Commissioner has been caught sending money to the terrorist separatists in Kashmir, that he has been part of the money laundering effort. Similarly, a Pakistani diplomat posted in Colombo. There's huge evidence that he was wanting to blow off, stroke, carry attrition of certain Indian assets in Bangalore, in Chennai, in Kerala. Also, Israeli assets in this area, the companies as, and, and Americans. And information sharing on a regular basis was taking place regarding this gentleman and his activities between Indian and American intelligence agencies. Once again, Pakistan's demonic face has been exposed globally. It is hard to believe that powerful hands sitting in Islamabad were not involved in this plot, as Pakistan in the past has been known for conducting state-sponsored terrorist activities. 
Pakistan in the recent past has been criticized by the United States for backing terrorism and not doing enough to finish the menace once and for all. The United States must now declare Pakistan a terror state if the country does not fall in line. And it's time now for a break. After the break, Imran Khan lashes out at anti-terrorist act in Pakistan. Blast in Afghanistan kills eight people. Pakistan's Anti-Terrorist Act ATA has always been questioned for its misuse by the army and law enforcement agencies. Now, Pakistan Tehreek Insaf PTI Chairman Imran Khan has criticized the ATA after terrorism cases were lodged against him reportedly for undertaking a political struggle. Newsweek South Asia takes a look. Talking to the media inside an anti-terrorism court on the sidelines of a hearing, Imran said, risks have to be taken to make big decisions, adding that a man should be judged by the decisions he makes. As the hearing went underway today, Imran's counsel, Babar Awan, quipped, My client's name is Khan and he is not a terrorist. The famous phrase from a famous Bollywood flick was responded to with laughter. Moreover, during today's hearing of the SSP attack case related to the 2014 protest sit-in, the court ruled that it will announce its decision on Imran's acquittal plea on April 25th. Several criminal cases were filed against the leadership of the PTI and its political ally, Pakistan Awami Tehreek, for fomenting violence against the state institutions and symbols during the 2014 dharna against the government in Islamabad. Later, speaking to the media outside the court, Imran repeated his statements inside. He opposed the use of lodging terrorism cases against political opponents. Imran, continuing his talk with the reporters, lashed out at Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, saying that people flock to the party when it is in power, whereas its members defect when it is not. The Sharif family has nothing in its money trial except for the Qatari letters. He claimed responding to the ongoing corruption case against the former Premier's family. In a response to a question, Imran said both Sharif brothers are attempting to dupe the nation by playing good cop, bad cop, explaining that Nawaz attacks the state institutions while Shehbaz attempts to mend the fences. Unfortunate news from Afghanistan came yet again when a blast in the Herat province took eight lives, including children. Newsweek South Asia takes a look. Another day, another blast. This time in Afghanistan's Herat province in the Shindan district Jilani Farad. On Monday, April 9th, a bomb detonated which was planted in an auto rickshaw near the mosque which is located in a fairly busy market area of the city. Eyewitnesses confirmed that the motorbike rickshaw in which the bomb was kept had stood there for hours. It is also being said that the security forces that were present in the location checked the vehicle but found nothing unusual. The rickshaw exploded a few hours later. Among the dead were four children who were declared dead in the hospital. The government officials say that so far eight people were killed and 17 injured in the blast. So far, no terrorist organization has claimed responsibility for the attack. The attacks will surely harm the steps taken by the Ashraf Ghani government of peace negotiations with the Taliban. The Afghani Taliban, though denied any involvement in this incident via Twitter, on Thursday, the Taliban militants entered the Khwaja Omari district in the Ghazni province and killed more than a dozen people, including the district's governor, Ali Dost Shams, his bodyguards and five other government intelligence agents.
Before the attack, Khwaja Omri was considered as one of the safest districts in the province. The deputy police chief, Ramzan Ali Mosheni, informed that at least 45 to 50 militants were also killed. The Taliban then torched the district headquarters, he said. Later, they left district headquarters that they attacked and government security forces returned. Bodies wrapped in blankets were laid on the ground of the district compound by late Thursday morning. Taliban spokesman Zaibullah Mujahid said in a statement 20 police officers were killed in the attack. Khwaja Omri is near the provincial capital also called Ghazni, a city of 150,000 people, 150 kilometers southwest of the Afghan capital Kabul. But these attacks come days after the Afghan Air Force attacked some terror bases in the Kunduz region. The US-led NATO coalition, which backs the Afghani Air Force, has increased the number of attacks on terror bases in the country. It is not even hard to see Pakistan's involvement in the entire matter. Pakistan has time and again funded and provided resources to the terrorist organizations which is plaguing Afghanistan. Over the years, evidence has surfaced now and again which showed Pakistan's direct involvement in these attacks. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Mariam signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye. <laughs>